Welcome back, everyone. This is another episode of Rediscovering God. I'm your host, Steve Eisenhower, and I'm with my friend Jason here again. Hello. hello. Thanks for having me again, man. Yeah, of course. And we're going to take, this is going to be a new series. We're actually going to take some time to discuss major topics across all three major Abrahamic faiths, not just how um, Christianity and Judaism differ, but now we're going to fa- factor in Islam as well. Um, and today we're going to lead off with obviously the question everyone's <laughs> asking, and that would be the concept of the Messiah, Moshiach. Right. And before before we start, I do want to say that I am not uh, I'm not Muslim. I'm a Nohide, uh just like Steve. But uh, I did I did study the religion and I and I will try to do as much justice to the religion as possible. I mean, if I'm wrong about something, I would love for someone to tell me in the comments because that's the way I grow and that's the way I learn too, right? right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and the real objective for this whole series is kind of like bring bringing peace and understanding between between everybody. Like if so, I knew what I knew about Islam and Judaism when I was younger. I would I would be more open to talking to like to be more welcoming and and knowing more friends as a, as a little kid and mm-hmm. and just knowing how similar all the religions are I think I, right. I think my life would have been changed with mm-hmm. better decisions I would have made right yeah because at the end of the at the end of the day we are all the Bene Hashem yeah uh, exactly. true we are literally all uh, the Bene yeah. Noach yeah that's true and. Uh, all family it doesn't need to be us versus them anymore yeah you know, exactly we, exactly we can see we can see in the world that things are beginning to culminate yeah um yeah i so agree i agree we're, we're whether all, it be in our lifetime or in our similar. what we believe in is super yeah. similar there are slight differences yes major differences yes but at least we we can like all stand on the same ground and see see each other as what it actually is. Right. Most certainly. Well, first things first, we're going to lead off <laughs> the big one. The big one. And that would be the concept of Moshiach in Judaism. Right. Okay. Um so I think for, for to start it off, um coming from Christianity, to find out that Messiah is the Messiah and Hashem is Hashem. God is God. That the, the Messiah is a human being. I think right. that is um, the first thing that we should just lay it out right there. That Judaism, right. the Messiah is different and God is absolutely different. Right. Right. And f- to make that abundantly clear, in 1 Samuel 17, I believe it's 1 Samuel 17, um, it says that David's progeny. Right. I mean, it's speaking right. it's speaking about Solomon, but every legitimate king after has to come, and it actually says, from your body. It's speaking to David and says that this has to come, the next in line has to come from your body. Right, right. Um, because as we all know, maybe some people who are watching don't know, is tribal lineage comes through your father. It's called your, father, your father's exactly. house. Exactly. That's, um, and that may, plays a major factor in determining who can be the Messiah. Right. Because so it has to be through Solomon. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and it cannot go through this. So there's descendants of Solomon it cannot go through. It can't go through right. uh, Jaconia. Right. Joachim. Right. And uh, Shealtiel. You're good with your Hebrew, man. Huh? You're good with your Hebrew. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Shealtiel. Right. So you now right. have a discredited line that Messiah cannot come right. from. Right. But a human father is important. That's I mean, exactly if you, if like you seek like, out the book of Numbers. Right. Moses. Moses was born of a human mother and a human father. Right. Same way the Messiah is going to be born: a human mother and human father. Right. right. Yep. The and but the the as I said, the book of Numbers in the first chapter three times. You see that tribal lineage is passed through the father. Through the father, exactly. Yeah. Um, the mo- the mother determines the citizenship, and right. the father determines which line, which tribe you're from. Right. That's why, and this is this might shock some people, 
That's why a convert has no tribe. Right. So traditionally, right. when you convert to Judaism, because you normally take upon yourself a Hebrew name. So, for example, if I were to convert to Judaism, I'm just going to give myself a random first name. We'll say like Arye or something like that, because okay. I think lions are cool. Okay. Uh, All so right. if I were to convert my – by tradition, really you would only take a different name if your father's Jewish and your mother's not and you converted. But if you're just a regular old convert, for example, my name would be like Arye ben Avram. Right, exactly. So son of Abraham. Right. But you have no tribal affiliation. And this is why the Torah has the uh, the commandment to care for the care for the convert. Because they have no tribe. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. And we saw what happened at the end of Judges when, when the tribe of Benjamin was not welcoming to the to the to that one Levite mm -hmm. and his and his concubine. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. Same exact concept. Because right? if you have no tribal inheritance, well then it's not like the Levites who were given their food by the by the uh, other tribes via right. the tithe, you know. Right. So it's that same exact thing. You have no tribe, so we're gonna get a little off topic off topic here. We're gonna bring it right back. I just wanna make this last final point. Right. If I were a if I were a Gare living in the land of Israel, technically right. Right. And I walked up to a Jew's door and knocked on his door and said, hi, I'm a Gair. He would have to give me charity. Right. Right. So. Yeah, so that's the whole convert idea, but tribal lineage is passed through the father. Right. Um, yeah. So the, the Messiah is a human. Right. Um, the Messiah needs to do certain amount of things to identify himself as right. the Messiah. Right. Right. Um. Uh, Elijah the prophet is going to precede the Messiah, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, all these things I did not see happening. The, the Messiah is not supposed to die and come back. Right. right? The Messiah right. is supposed to come here one time and do what he has to do. Right. And even if we concede the point that John the Baptist was Eliyahu, which Fine. John the Baptist said from his own mouth in the New Testament that he wasn't. Yeah. yeah. But regardless, even if we concede that point and he was okay. just being humble— Mm -hmm. uh, one of the most important signs, because there needs to be some tangibility here. There needs right. to be the and ability. And a sign, let, to make something clear, a sign is something that we can see, that we can identify. Right. Like right. a virgin birth is not a sign because I can't tell if that woman is a virgin. Only she right. knows if she's a virgin, really, honestly. Right. There's actually right. a proverb that talks about that. Exactly. A sign is something that we can witness and, and actually tangibly either hold or actually see with our eyes and say, yeah, this is this is a sign, a sign, a stop sign. A sign is something you see. Right. Right. Um, but world peace. World and peace is another one. Right. World peace. And do we have world peace? That's a very important thing to ask yourself. If you look right. outside or you watch the news and right. people are killing each other. Right. Isaiah sign has not yet come. Period. Exactly, right? And the bloodiest war of all time is is the Thirty Year War. Is Christians yeah. versus Christians. Christians versus Christians? Exactly. Right. Um, another Pops, one. Resurrection okay. of the dead. Yeah. Sorry if I cut you off. No, no, you're fine. Yeah, resurrection of the dead. I mean, Matthew kind of uh, implied that that happened, but uh, Matthew, no contemporary a lot of source. things happening, and right. there was no tangible proof. Yeah, you would. Uh, there was no contemporary because that's that's a big deal. That's Someone a big deal. would Somebody write that down. About besides, it, it would have yeah. been in the Talmud at least. Yeah, Be yeah, bare minimum. Bare, bare minimum. minimum. Torah going a worldwide knowledge of God. Torah yes. going forth from Zion. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, the temple being rebuilt, not being temple destroyed. being rebuilt is that's huge. Right. There's 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 plans in in Ezekiel mm -hmm. for the yep. third temple. Yep. And by the way, the Temple Institute is ready. Is ready. They already. Ready. From what I understand, it is already yeah. partitioned out. I, I think I saw a document. As soon yeah. as it's as soon as it's ready, as soon as they seize. Once that green light says go. Yeah, that's probably a better way. But I don't want to I don't want to <laughs> insinuate yeah. anything because that's a touchy subject right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But as soon as possible, 
Yeah, once they get the okay, yeah, it's going, it's in full effect. Yeah, that's what, that's that's the uh, impression I get too from right. reading all this. So another thing to be clear about is the external signs of the age of Messiah are a lot more explicit than who he is. Right, uh, right, and the Tanakh is very clear about that. Like they talk about the 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 world, how it's supposed to look, rather right. than the Mashiach, the Messiah himself, right? Right. And I think that makes more sense because as someone living in Canada, how am I supposed to identify the Mashiach? Yeah, we have the internet in Israel. When right. I look outside, I can right. see the world changing in front of me. Like I said, signs is something that we can see, mm-hmm. right? Right. Like, we and have if to you, see signs. If you, cross, if you were to cross-reference Ezekiel 36 and the book of Joel, okay, a lot of that has to do with the na- the land of Israel itself. So what is one huge prophecy about the Messianic age that is explicit towards the land, that it will bear its fruit for the people as they begin to return? And we are seeing seeing produce in the land of Israel like never before in our lifetime. I bought grapes from Israel the other day. Yeah. (laughs) And another big sign is the exiles returning. Yes, the gathering of the exiles. And then what happened after Jesus came? The entire... An expulsion. Exactly. They went to diaspora. They are, well, they now started returning. Right. Okay, Shem. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, mm. so yeah, that's, that's, oh, Messiah will, Mashiach will also have his own children. Right. Right. Uh, because who's going to, he's not, this isn't like, this isn't the Christian idea where right. Jerusalem descends and right. we live forever. Jesus reigns. Yeah. Yeah. The resurrection of the dead is our physical body resurrecting back to the earth. Um, but for the dynasty to continue, people are going to die still. It's just now yeah. there's no more sin. Yeah. Well, no more. No. Let me correct that. No more intentional sin. No more rebellion yeah. against yeah. God. We will, yeah. We see the consequences of sin and we choose not to. Mm-hmm. Unless it's accident. Right. And that's that's the point of Torah going forth from Zion and why there is no more war is because... Everyone, it the, 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 the God of Israel will be so obvious. Mm-hmm. It'll be as obvious as two plus two. Mm-hmm. So it's and basically that, wars are, you know, I think the Tanakh insinuates wars are pretty much because of our different I- ideologies, right? Oh, basically, certainly, that's most certainly. That's exactly. Wars are. Yeah, Tanakh ideology. insinuates. That's we all have all one ideology. Of exactly. Why would we need to war? Mm-hmm. Well, think about all the major wars. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like okay. you brought up the Thirty Years' War. You have all of the Crusades. <laughs> you yeah. have um, the Byzantine Empire was pretty much conquesting. You know, so I would even venture to say World War Two was kind of. Yeah, I would say so too. Uh, you have the mass genocide of the Jewish people, and yeah, I would say so whether too. Whether or not that is what caused World War II, because I mean, obviously a scholar would disagree. Mm-hmm. Um, right, but, right. But you can't deny that Nazi Germany killed six million Jews exactly during a major world war of conquest. Exactly. So exactly, it's yeah, it's crazy. It's like, and then. To me, the most remarkable part is like, like six years after Israel got their 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 state and then we had to defend it, right. like almost right, right away. And it's like it was like right. nothing. Right. And they lost six million people like six years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And still, not all the Jews returned. Like it's remarkable, but that's mm. that's not what we're talking about right now. Not right. <laughs> <laughs> so that gives a pretty good idea. Uh, yeah, like basically what 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 is really the key thing that I think that uh, a lot of people need to to realize is that the Messiah is a man, right? Born of a man and a woman, and he will a judge poor, among the nations. That's yeah, big too. a leading Jew, right? Um, right. We need to see Elijah coming back. We yeah. need to see yeah, bullet the points, Elijah. Elijah. Uh, I, I was I was listening to one rabbi. He said that um, there's going to be there might be a uh, uh, 
what's that what's it called how do i explain it like resurrection in um in stages right and moshe will come back and and iran will come back and 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 moshe would 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 teach them mashiach right right, right. and and like we gotta go through all these stages and and the tribes need to return and and you can't and why if 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 you claim the messiah already came how come i don't see one of these fulfillments not one not one change in the world right and that's that's what we really need to consider is that tanakh is giving you criteria yeah that you can yes. see yes. like yes. world peace yes. after of course the final war so you have the in gathering of the exiles yes world peace yes um land giving forth its fruit again yes temple temple yeah. If you don't see those things, well, guess what? <laughs> but the, well, I think Rabbi Tovia Singer kind of pointed it out. It's like after Jesus came, like the opposite happened. Of yeah, every single everything. one of these things. Completely opposite. The temple was the temple was destroyed. Judea was completely expulsed. Expulsed. Sorry, what's, what's the word? <laughs> like completely exiled. Okay. Exiled. How yeah. about that? Um, no peace. Like like we talked about the Thirty Year War. Uh, I mean, I think it's time to talk about the Christian Messiah now. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's transition now because we have a pretty good default baseline of what yeah. Moshiach, yeah. according to Tanakh, is. Yeah. So, Christianity posits now that Messiah. So we'll take the. I'm gonna go Trinitarian idea first. Yeah, I think that's the the main view of of uh, Jesus. I think. Yeah, that's so, mo- the most consensus for sure. Yeah. Which I think I myself wasn't raised Trinitarian, so. Oh yeah, yeah, you told if me. If you that. were, you can take you can take that one. Go ahead. Um no, I think we should we can discuss it together. Okay. Like I think I think um most Trinitarians would would agree when I say that they believe that Jesus was one the Messiah, right, and the Son of God, because right. he had no earthly father. Right. Right. And then um. And what did we say about tribal lineage? Exactly. So if he has no earthly father, he has no tribal lineage. He has no tribal lineage. Therefore, he's not from the house of David. Therefore, he cannot be the Messiah. And if you and if you rebut that with, well, Joseph adopted him. Tribal lineage only is passed through your mm-hmm. biological father. Yeah. Period. Exactly. Um, yeah. That's a, that's like saying that uh, Rabbi Singer adopted me, and now I am part of the tribal Levi. Right. Right? And that doesn't work like that. It does not work like that. Right. I mean we not that we're not that we're saying that Jesus is a convert because if Mary was, was a Jew a Jewess, then Jesus was a Jew. Jesus was a Jew. Um but if he had a Roman father, if let's just be hypothetical here. Right. If we take the if we take the Talmudic scholarly idea right. of that right. he had a that he was a Mamzer from Right. A Roman, a Roman soldier. Well, soldier, guess what? Yeah. He has no tribal lineage, but he is counted amongst the people. Right. Same right. thing holds true if he's the quote unquote son of God, the di- the divine son of God. Right. Right. And I think that like when it comes to the fulfillment of uh, prophecy, um, like some things is like like they don't. There's not not need for a third temple because Jesus was the last sacrifice, right? Uh, there's peace in my heart, not, uh, not world peace. Right? Well, I'm glad that you actually brought that up, that Jesus was the last sacrifice, because um, Tanakh does state that Mesh- the Mesh- Mashiach will bring a sacrifice. Once the temple is brought back, he will bring right. a sin sacrifice. Now, if right. you read the book of Leviticus, they were only for sins done in ignorance. Th- okay, sins I think you're hitting a very, very real topic he will here. bring a sacrifice on behalf of him and his people. Right. So we said that once Mashiach comes, there'll be no more sin, right? Therefore, there's not need for a temple and not need for a sacrificial system. But we're saying now, once the Messiah comes and the temple is rebuilt, he's going to bring a sacrifice, a sin offering. And here is like the finest point that I had to put to, to completely leave Christianity is that the sin offering is for accidental sin. Right. Or 
or a a sin that you 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 mitigate by by confessing your own guilt, right? Mm -hmm. The guilt offering, right? Right. The guilt offering, right? That's the only that's the only two times I think that you bring a a blood like sacrifice or well the well being offering and and then then the you know. But I'm talking about for sin when you bring right. and. When, just to elaborate that that guilt offering you mentioned is a very very specific offering right. that you technically got away with it you got you, away with it you mitigated it by confessing your own guilt right. no and one even mentions you. that you went before the court and were not found guilt that you weren't found guilty of this sin by a court but you feel bad right so right, right there is your atonement you're feeling bad and confessing it true true yeah right? so 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 the reason you need a uh, sin sacrifice is because we're still going to sin accidentally. So these are min these are minimal sins that only can be replaced from by blood. Other than that, like you have, like Jesus, Jesus cannot be a sin offering. One, human sacrifice is abomination to God. Right. Right. Two, his blood was not sprinkled on the altar. Did do you no. read in any of the gospels where someone took his blood and sprinkled it on the altar? Altar. <laughs> Nope. Three, he wasn't even sacrificing the right spot. Right. Four, he was not a was he was not a kosher sacrifice. No. Because it has to be an unblemished sacrifice. Jesus was circumcised according to Luke. Right. Right. So I think that that one, the Messiah is not supposed to die. First of all, the Messiah is supposed to come and establish peace and God's God's rule over earth. That's really what it is. He will rule, but God... But right, he, there's, a, there's a reason he's called the prince. The prince. Ah, I like that. Because God is the king. I like that. <clears throat> I like that. That is true. Um, the Messiah in Christianity is also the high priest. Right? Right. And, and... What we said is that your tribal lineage dictates is is from your father, and since Jesus had no father, he can't be high priest or king or right. from the tribe of Judah, because the high and priest or only from the tribe of Levi, more specifically the sons of Aaron. Yeah, even right? if even if we grant that Joseph was his father, he right. still cannot be high priest. Right, exactly. Like I said, if Toby Singer ad adopted me, right. Mm -hmm. But you can't example, have two daddies. You cannot example, have two daddies. It is, I don't know how many people know this. If a normal Jew, a non, someone who isn't a, uh, of the Kohanim, mm -hmm. if they do something that only a Kohan can do, that is a very grave sin. A great sin. Very grave. Yeah, you just punishable by death. Yeah. I don't think well, too many yeah. people know that. See, so, to even that. so to even posit that you could be high priest and king at the same time is it's no, it's just not it's possible because it's two tribal lineage and you can't have two daddies to make up the, to make two biologic fathers you can't right. right um also the messiah is part of a holy like the holy ghost is also part of this trinitarian idea of god um right. i i don't think we should go too much into it but uh until we talk about like the concept of God in the three religions, but I think this this is a good point to bring up because you see in the we had mentioned the book of Joel before, right? And in the prophecy, this would be the third chapter, right? Um, it mentions I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, uh, hmm. so on and so forth. Young men will dream dreams. And this is obviously talking me messianic age, right? Um. We always see Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. That's the right. right. And you and I have discussed before that Ruach HaKodesh. Kodesh is a noun. Yeah. That's the verb yeah. rendering of the root. Right. Um, for it to be an adjective, it's Kadosh. You don't you don't see the angels in Ezekiel saying Kodesh, Kodesh, Kodesh. You see them saying Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Mm -hmm. Because Kodesh is actually holiness. So spirit of holiness. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You see many times that the Spirit of God dwelt in the temple, all over the earth, you know. It's a... I think you explained it really well last last time. It was... Uh, 
What is it? It's not the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you said the Spirit. Yeah, it's the Spirit. Of, yeah, exactly. So when you see Ruach HaKodesh and it's always rendered as Holy Spirit. It's a Christian, that, uh, yeah. It's yeah, it's it's actually the Spirit of Holiness. Kodesh is a noun. Right. So that's that Spirit of Holiness is going to be over all those who aren't opposed to God in, in the Messianic Age, obviously. Mm -hmm. Because they will all be destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, the knowledge of God will be so apparent. It's like yeah. two plus two. Yeah. You know, you don't have to teach your neighbor. Right. And if you don't have to teach your neighbor, then it's as if we all are like prophets. Right. Yeah. We all have the same ideology. And that's so <laughs> now you see what your daughters will dream. Your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will dream dreams or no, your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. And even the slaves will have the spirit. Oh, wow. Spirit yeah, that's actually problem. true. You have a good point there. You have a good point there. So it's it's not that it's not the it's not the day of Pentecost outpouring of the Holy Spirit like most Christians would insinuate that mm -hmm. scripture is talking mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. Because if that's the case, um where's the temple? Where's the yeah. where's everything? Where's, World yeah. peace. Right? So basically I think uh to wrap up Trinitarian, um we can say that Trinitarians believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus and the Messiah is God. The Messiah is high priest and is part of a triune Godhead. Yeah. Uh, am I missing anything major there? No, I think that's pretty much got it. Now we'll move on to the modalist. Right. Um, so in modalism, very similar to Trinitarianism, except they do not believe in a trinity, rather just a singular one godhead that god manifests himself in modes okay i i don't i still i cannot wrap my head around that like okay but, um because but you are left with deuteronomy 6 4 you're left with the shema so they have yeah oh i, um, I understand i understand i understand what you're saying um you're so they the simply shema. say that there's one God, he just manifests himself however he deems, and that's how you can be 100% man and 100% God. But you cannot, you cannot align with one verse in the Torah just to blatantly contradict another. So right. Right. you need to keep the Shema, but you think Deuteron or you think Numbers 23, 19 doesn't matter. You know, God is not a man that yeah, he can find, nor the son yeah. of man that he must repent. Right. And Jesus is proclaimed to be the son of man and and you know so uh it all just falls apart right right um but yeah the 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 passover this, this is what i'll touch on in modalism because okay. everything else is pretty similar to what you just brought up with trinitarianism right. so this is the only point i'll add is uh they really adhere to the passover lamb that he was our passover um Majority of Christianity, I don't really think, understands what the Passover sacrifice was. Uh, I agree with that. I agree with that. It's it's not – it has nothing to do with sin. Zero. In fact, when you do see a sin sacrifice brought up and it's a lamb, it had to be female. Um, Ooh. Uh, the Passover sacrifice, though, they do get correct, was a yearling male of the sheep or the goats – Mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I suggest kind of tears down Christian theology too because they believe sheep and goats – represent saints and sinners but the passover sacrifice can be a sheep or a goat true uh wow wow <laughs> that's a parable by jesus yeah yeah um but what was the passover lamb what was the pascal lamb exactly before the exodus took place right the last the last um the last trial that the egyptians had to go through the last plague right 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 the jews and had to sacrifice a lamb Right. And what were the plagues? What was the, what were the point of the plagues? To, 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 to show the Egyptians who was God. That's a good question. Because right. they worship the lamb right. as God. Yeah. Well, and what else did they Jews do? Jews had that to was... tie the lamb to their beds for mm. four days. Yeah, you brought it in four days prior. Yep. Right. right. And right. then, like, directly defying the, the, the Egyptians, like, yo, I tied your, your God inside my house. Right? right. Just think yeah, about that. Shepherds, think about shepherds were abhorrent to them. Yeah, because exactly. Because how would my God need caretaking? Exactly. Exactly. 
That's why Joseph told his brothers, don't tell them that you were shepherds. Don't tell them you're shepherds. Exactly. Exactly right. right. And that's why Pharaoh actually concedes to Moses. He's like, listen, if this is if making offerings to your God is really all you want, go do it. Yeah, he said go do it. Moses is like, dude, (laughs) dude, Pharaoh. Yeah. yeah. If if we slaughter lambs in front of you, your Egyptian people are going to kill us. Yeah, true. So the plagues were an attack, a blatant attack on the Egyptian gods. Yeah. Well, honestly, the way I see it, like the plagues were attacked by was an attack on every world's God. Just at that time was the Egyptian God. Right. Right. And which one? Which one really? um, And if you don't believe what we're saying, if you're a Christian and you think this is all um, a load of bunk. That's good, because then I'm going to say, go read it. Yeah, go go read read it. it. And then Google K-H-N-U-M. That is the Egyptian god named Kanum. And he is actually the god who created people. Okay. Uh, He actually made them out of clay, like clay from the Nile, on a potter's wheel. Okay, okay. Body of a man, head of a sheep. Oh, the god. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, oh. Interesting. Yeah, so exactly, like the sac- the Passover lamb was to s- was basically it was saying we fear killing God. the Egyptian god, right, putting more blood the on the door so mm-hmm. that their firstborn is not going to die. Where do you see the word sin in that entire story? Right, right. And if Jesus is the Passover lamb, that means he's the Egyptian false god that you need to slaughter. Right, if, if you are really getting into typology... Yeah, it's so what you exactly. you worship the personification of the Egyptian <laughs> fertility god is really what you <laughs> what you wow. believe. In. Um, wow, that is crazy. And there's some cool symbolism that goes along with. So, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard this before. Uh, why the firstborn? I never heard. Okay, so. Pharaoh. It says that every Egyptian, even the livestock, all the way up to the firstborn of Pharaoh would be affected by this plague, right? Mm -hmm. So what was the firstborn of Pharaoh? The The next Pharaoh, right? Yeah, yeah. And Pharaohs were god kings. Gods manifested on the earth. Okay, well, what were the firstborn of the people? This is written really back into some ancient... They're the the biggest, like, inheritance of of their, right? Double they portion. were sanctified as priests. The firstborn. The first, yes, the firstborn son in ancient Egyptian culture was sanctified as the priests of that next generation. So, in one fell oh. swoop, he takes out the god king Pharaoh's son and their priesthood and the priesthood. Whoa! And That's the person of man, all because the because the uh, people said, you know what, we fear Hashem. More than we fear the gods of the Egyptians, and we're yeah. to kill the kill the 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 physical representation of your god, and God's answers in kind, and takes out the god your, king your, and your priest. next god and priesthood. Yeah. Wow. Yep. And then the blood on the doorposts. Um. Oh, it's like a, a canal, right? A out of Egypt, I have called my son, my firstborn. Yeah. The people enough. rush out of yeah. it's it's the birth of the nation. So yeah. it the literally birth of a nation. Yeah. yeah, one big beautiful story. Yeah, but we yeah, got a little really, bit on really. a tangent. But that was that's really the only extra addition I wanted to put on the Christian side of things. Right, is that the Passover sacrifice had nothing to do with sin for one. Right, that's and actually two, a very good point. Yeah, and two, it is on. really it's it's called a righteousness offering if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but really you're just proving like, I just killed an eight year God, you know, like yeah. I, I fear yeah. my God more than yeah. I fear you, you, you know, you, you, and whatever you can do and whatever God you throw at me. Okay. And finally, oh, we have Unitarianism. Yes. Yes. Uh, so you need real quick. Unitarianism does not believe that Jesus was divine. Okay. Right. Right. Uh, It'd also be very similar to what the Ebionites believed, um, but they do believe in vicarious atonement. Um, 
big bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No man can die for the sins of another. Right. Right, right, right. Ezekiel, right? So yeah. That's yeah, also Deuteronomy, if I'm not mistaken. I think Deuteronomy 8, maybe. I think Ezekiel Don't quote me on that, the but... same thing. Ezekiel says the same thing. The son will not be punished for the sins of the father, and the father won't be punished for the sins of the son. Right? right? And and even in um even during the Exodus story, right? When when they bowed down to the to, to the idol, mm -hmm. only those who, who bow, bent their knee will die, right? Mm-hmm. So, Are you talking about the golden calf? The golden calf, exactly. Yeah. 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 We should actually. I wanna. I wanna do a show on the golden calf because a lot of people get the golden calf wrong. Um, oh yeah, that's actually a lot of people get a lot of things wrong. <laughs> for example, I mean, this is like general consensus. Like every Christian I know has the golden calf idea wrong. Um, um I think I. I think it was done purposely by the church. I mean, Probably. I, I could be completely wrong. Because but. the rhetoric is always extremely anti-Semitic. Yeah. yeah. Aaron like, lied to Moses. It makes it look like all the Jews did it. Right? So if, if that's true, if Aaron formed the golden calf and it right. wasn't because of the mixed multitude who was there. Right. Okay. If Aaron himself shaped that golden calf and then lied to Moses about it, when Moses said, who still stands on the side of God? And the entire tribe of Levi moved over with Moses. How how did Aaron move over with Moses? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, exactly. And how out of how like, out of <laughs> why why would Aaron do that? Men. Aaron so Aaron how experienced out of over God himself. One million people were only three thousand killed. If the whole if yeah the whole exactly nation. exactly. And Aaron continues on in the story. Come on, man. Right. I would just I just want to make one more point because mm -hmm. I re I really believe Aaron wasn't too far off. He knew Moses was coming down soon, so he was trying to stall the people. That's why he said, "Give me your gold," because he didn't think they would do it. Um, okay. He okay. did it faster than he expected. He said, "Okay, we're gonna do this so we can." He said, "We're gonna build an altar so we can do it tomorrow." Trying to prolong a little bit longer because he knows he's gonna get killed if he doesn't at least pretend like he's doing something. Um, he cast the gold into the vat, but here's the deal. Everyone, everyone always gives Aaron a bad rap because <clears throat> of what he did after Moses was gone. What did the people follow around for guidance through the land? A golden statue, right? Oh yeah. 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 The yeah, golden yeah. ark with the two. Yeah. 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 Oh. Okay. Fine. The ark of the covenant. Right. Yeah. That's true. So maybe Aaron was on the right track he just did it without the command of god to do so mm, maybe that's deep that's very deep maybe he just wants to make a throne for god right maybe right. and it says the calf leapt out now, why would aaron lie you know why would aaron lie he knows that god and moses you know why yeah why? he experienced it himself yeah yeah why would aaron lie <laughs> yeah when it even says, when the calf does come out, who then switches to who's speaking? It says, and they said, this is your God, Israel, who brought you out of Egypt. Who's they? The mixed multitude. The Egyptians okay. who came honestly, with the people. You have to read the Bible very detailed like that. Right. Like they said. Who's they? Yeah. And why is it separate from Israel? Right. If Israel was speaking, they'd say, These, this is our God who brought it's us out. God. Yeah, exactly. Israel. This is our God. Yeah. Who's they and why are they speaking to Israel? Like, that's how you, like, you got to really right. pick apart. And God the even like says that. to Moses, um, your people have created a golden calf. Not my Ooh. people. Because, because God didn't want the multitude to come. And Ooh. Moses argued on their behalf and said, but if they want to come, let them come. Yeah, and and, and 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 Moses was raised an Egyptian. Yeah, your people. Yeah. Pretty deep, deep right? very deep. <laughs> but all right, finally, let's finish right. up with Islam. Okay. Right. Islam's version of the Messiah, from from my research, is uh, when I was looking into different religions, is uh, pretty similar to Judaism and pretty similar to Christianity. Like, yes, Jesus is the Messiah. In Islam, Jesus is the Messiah. I think 
when I found that out, I think that's how I lost all my hair. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, it was like, what? This, this Islam is really person? In ideology, Islam would really be similar to like a Unitarian Christianity yeah, minus yeah. the vicarious atonement, right? Yeah, minus, so it's very close to Judaism in, in, in the sense is that, that we have to earn our salvation, right? We all have to... Islam is very different in, in terms of like once you get past the core beliefs, there's one God, it's the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, right? Mm -hmm. This is the God that made heaven and earth, everything. There's no partnership with him, right? All the prophets that, that are written in the Tanakh is, is all the prophets that he sent, right? Mm -hmm. They believe in they believe in the Torah, they believe in the New Testament, they just believe that it was corrupted and we don't have the original copies. Right. Right? And just for a disclaimer for everybody, because I don't want I don't want to offend any Jews, I don't want to offend any Christians, and I don't want to offend any Muslims. Right. But Muslims do believe that the Jews corrupted their texts. Right. And they also right. believe that the and Christians And you quote corrupted. Jeremiah for that, but that's a whole different uh right. That's a whole different ball game, right? But uh yeah, so they believe that Jesus is the Messiah. They believe that Jesus is a human. Mm -hmm. They believe he was born a virgin. Okay? They, they don't believe he died on the cross. They believe that somebody was made to look like he died on the cross. And this is where I said, this is why I say that Islam is very different in terms of once you get past the core beliefs, everything else is pretty much up to your interpretation, yeah. right? It's like, very much damaged. How, <laughs> yeah, it's like, how did Jesus, how did, if Jesus didn't die on the cross, how did it look like he died on the cross, right? Mm -hmm. Some... Some, some. They probably say it was Simon of Cyrene, right? No, actually, some people. Uh, yeah. Well, some some people say it was uh, Judas, right? Mm -hmm. Right. That it was his final punishment for betraying right. Jesus, right? So to me, this actually sounds very Gnostic. Um, yeah, that may be very pretty. Deep. But they also believe that um, once the once the other person was made to look like Jesus, Jesus was lifted up into heaven in front of his uh. All the people that were present there, their disciples and whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. um, more importantly, the Messiah in Islam is more about the end times rather than right like, than now. Like the Al Dajjal is is the the Antichrist, really the the anti Messiah, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, Al is is the article of the and Dajjal means the one who deceives, right? So basically. Uh, at first, some 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 uh, commentaries say that uh, he will say that he will claim to be Jesus at first, right? Uh, and uh, then he will claim to be God, right? And and this guy, like he'll have one his right eye would some say it will be hanging, some will be same say it will be dry like a grape, but his right eye would not work, right? And only true believers in Islam would see on his head's written. Um, Kafir, which means uh, blasphemy. Huh. Okay? Only true believers will see blasphemy across his head, and he will be able to to kill somebody, split them apart, walk in between them, bring them back together, and then he will say, do you believe I'm God? I could take away your life, and I can restore it to you. I am your God. And he will claim to be God, right? Which we know is blasphemy, right? Right. And then um, that's when Jesus will come back. Right. So they have an antichrist idea, much like Christianity does. Yes. Um, yes. And yes. if and if you read into the the antichrist rhetoric, it actually kind of proposes that Judaism's Mashiach is yes. Christ. I agree with that. I actually agree with that, and and that makes me scared for for the end times. It's like, man, these guys. It's, it's scary. It's scary. It's but scary. if you didn't have that, let me just let me just move forward with this because this is getting to a very very deep dark realm i think right. if you don't have that who's going to oppose jerusalem yeah, i know you're right it says edom but you're right yeah what is edom christianity. edom is the church yeah it's christianity <laughs> <laughs> um, sad but true but yeah so once the dajjal uh, once jesus comes back he will end up uh destroying the dajjal uh, he will not then reign for 40 years, right? Have children and then die, be buried next to Muhammad. And 
after he defeats the Dajjal, he would say that Islam is the real religion and Muhammad is the greatest prophet for bringing so much people to to Allah, huh. right? And and yeah, he'll rule for 40 years. So it's there is no vicarious atonement. He he will usher in a a a the end of days, which is a a peaceful utopia world, justice everywhere, right? Um. Yeah. So basically, Jesus is supposed to usher in a utopia just like Christianity. After he defeats the Antichrist. Right. Jean, in the, in, in right. So they, they really piggybacked off of both belief systems is the way yeah, it sounds. Like, um, like they, if you take all the Greek influence away from Christianity, you'll have Islam. Wow. Yeah. Really, honestly. Like, you start thinking about it and, and you're like, yeah. 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 And, and if you keep the Semitic traditions of, of Judaism, it's just like, well, he's got... Yeah, you have Islam. That's really what it is. Take away the Greek of Christianity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, like I said, like like Islam is pretty much something like it's like in between Judaism and Christianity. Yeah, like I said, it was it was a uh, last time we spoke, I mentioned it was basically like a, a monotheistic damage control. Yeah, I, I actually believe that. I actually response believe that. You to think about that? Yeah, I, I believe that. And it's also a fulfillment of um, Hashem's promise to to Haggai, mm. right? When when he promised her that your son will be a mighty nation and oh to Hagar, yeah, yeah, right, right. yeah, yeah, so, a mighty nation. Yeah, twelve, 12, uh, twelve princes. Am I right when I say that? I think so. I think nation so. Nation of twelve princes. I think that I would think constantly so. be at war with each other. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, but but yeah, Muhammad yeah, is right. descended from Ishmael, right? Mm-hmm. So, and so. as I'd like to really wrap it up with, and you and I have spoken about this before, is that in order for Torah to go forth from Zion and there to be a worldwide knowledge of God, yeah, yeah. but yeah. there's still to be some, because we know that when Messiah comes, the nations are going to be, they're going to be surprised that they were wrong, right? Yeah, exactly. But for it to be so apparent, there has to be a radical an idea, an idea, idea yeah, of awareness, what, an awareness of what of what it is. Yes, yes. Yeah. And the whole world, for example, in thirty five hundred years ago, when the majority of the world is worshiping a whole pantheon of gods, right? I think one guy sits upon the throne of Jerusalem, and says, "Okay, time for utopia," and they're all be like, "What are you talking about, man?" Yeah, who are you? <clears throat> but when the entire world is waiting for this one figure, and a right. couple people are just have a misconception about it, right, right. Uh, but they all have this same monotheistic mind. You know, everything is in Hashem's divine plan. I truly believe that. I agree with you. I agree with you. I think this is exactly the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. And that poses the question, right? It's like if if at the time when Jesus was on the earth, walking on the earth, right, the Jews. Re- the only set of people who were expecting a Messiah rejected him, right? Why didn't right. the Romans come out and say, like, listen, this is the Messiah? They didn't know about it. Now that right. you know about it, how are you going to say that this guy is the Messiah when, when the people that actually were waiting for a Messiah said, I don't think so? Mm-hmm. Right. You know, you could just pick apart everything. Like, once mm-hmm. you start pulling on one end, you you end up at the other end all the time. It's all right. connected. Yep. And the the thing is, you see so many times in Tanakh that it talks about destruction of two temples, two exiles. Yeah. They hadn't had a second destruction and a second exile yet. So the the messiahship claim of Jesus falls apart, period. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very fast. Very fast. And the divinity claim of Jesus falls apart very fast. Like, right. we have to understand, is like, did any of this happen? Okay? No. Did one would the one prophecy from Judaism happen? No. Okay. Then how can you know that this guy's the Messiah? How do you know? How do you know? Right. Right. Why are you claiming? Like, I think, I think you told me something yesterday or the other day where, where it's like that, that people... The, the Christian belief is rooted in belief, not fact. And and I'm like, you know what? That's probably the 
best way to put it. Because once you start putting facts together, it doesn't add up. Right. Yep, exactly right. Uh, it's it's very much emotional. Um, very, very. Taking well, what taking what you're told at face value. Yeah, that, that's um, a, I have a very, very, very um, intricate uh, idea about that. Um, just let me. I'll go into it later, actually, because it's gonna take a long time. It's about yeah. just saying the okay. Shema and like all this stuff. But, like, I think what we want you to come away with is that the Messiah was supposed to do certain things. The Messiah is supposed to be born of a man and a woman. Right. A natural human being. Right. The citizenship of Judaism he gets from his mother. The tribe of where he's from is from his father. Right. Cannot have, you cannot separate the two. You need both parents involved. Right. Right. Uh, He's not divine. He's supposed to do X, Y, and Z. And we haven't seen that yet. Mm Mm-hmm. So exactly. if you're claiming this 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 one man is the Messiah because of all these things that are supposed to happen based on the Jewish Bible, well, it didn't happen yet. So I think right. you should just reflect on on just just go through go through what 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 the what the Jewish texts say about the Messiah, what he's supposed to do, and really ask yourself is like, yeah. did Jesus fulfill anything, right? Because when I was growing up Christian, it was like, Jesus will come back and fulfill the rest. Jesus yeah. will come back and fulfill the rest. In order to fulfill, to fulfill the rest, he's supposed to fulfill some things first. And now that I'm looking at it, he didn't do anything. Yeah. For me, now that I'm looking at it, it's just like, this was a guy who may have thought that he could have been the Messiah. Who many people may have thought could have been the Messiah. But once he right. died, so did that dream. And now in the in the age of the internet... Open up multiple prop. You can Google what prophets are talking to the same people and in what time period. Okay, that's very important. I think. Open up, open up very the internet. Open up multiple tabs and open up three or four prophets at once and read their accounts next to each other, and then weigh Ooh. them all against Samuel King's yeah. Chronicles. Yeah, and you are going to no. be blown away. Yeah, by re- they're all talking about the same thing. The same thing. You know, they might have taken a different approach. For example, for example, Joel relayed what the Messianic age, how calamity comes, the nations mock you. But when you turn your face to me, I will bring you back and restore you. He relates that to a plague of locusts that was affecting the yield at the time. Mm, the, he, um, the, Ezekiel, go, I mean, his book's huge, goes in all different directions. Um, yeah. Isaiah. Isaiah Isaiah's talking about the same thing that... Uh, Zephaniah is talking about mm-hmm. the same word, shout, O daughter of Zion. And Zephaniah, I think it's Zephaniah, I really hope I'm not getting this wrong, but he's using the plural, where, where Isaiah is using the singular uh, version yes, of serpent. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so the verses you are talking about right now, everyone who's listening to this video right now, open up two, one Bible, two Bible apps on your phone, two Bibles, I don't care what it is. Open up to Isaiah 53, 9, and then Zephaniah 3, 13. Yeah, yeah, read them it. It. right next to one another. And, because tell me, and tell me that they're talking about one person and that, right. and that person is Jesus. Because I believe that Hashem knows everything, knew everything before it could happen, and knew that 1.5 billion people on earth would believe that Isaiah 53 was about Jesus being beaten and killed. Okay, and, I believe yeah. he knew that. The suffering so what did he yeah. do? He said, "Listen, Zephaniah, I'm going to have you write the exact same thing, but you're going to you're going to say exactly who I'm talking about." Yeah, yeah. The the the, the nation of Israel, exactly. Because that's actually an anomaly for for two prophets to basically say the exact same thing. That's actually an anomaly, pretty much. It doesn't yeah. ever happen. Yeah. Really. I mean the yeah. the. Obviously, sometimes, the, sometimes. No, the motifs are happens, clear that they're happens. talking about the same thing. Yeah, but to yeah. basically say verbatim the same thing is very, very, very rare. Right. Very rare. What happens? Because, if, because that makes it seem as if you're copy and pasting someone else, right. and that's right. not prophecy. Right. And then this, but the thing is, tell me one time in church you study from the book of Zephaniah. Never. Never. Exactly. The problem with, 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 like, the way I see the problem with churches is, like, they don't go from, 
A to B. They go right. from, I feel like talking about this. They draw the target around the arrow. I talk do. about this this week. I talk about that this week. Read the Bible from front to back, and then you'll have a very clear picture of what he's talking right. about. In a, in a Jewish shul, Orthodox, I'll, I'll Orthodox. Go with that. Orthodox Jewish shul, every year they go through the entire, the entire Torah. Every and you're going year. to try and tell them what their Torah says. Ridiculous. You know? and, yeah. And they have Torah. They're like, come on. They're going through everything. Right. Right. And the Haftarah, you know, so many people don't even know what the Haftarah is. They see, because there's actually a, there's actually evidence of Jesus reading the Haftarah in the New Testament. Exactly. Yeah. Um, well, reading it wrong, but it's okay. <laughs> right. right, right. <laughs> but what was the Haftarah? I mean, Let's exactly. think about this. In the time the of the Seleucids, right. you weren't allowed to have Torah scrolls. You're not allowed to read from the Torah in synagogues. Um, not even have so, a Torah scroll. Think about that. Right. So what did they do? They went through the Nach, the rest of the the, yeah, yeah, the, exactly. and, the Ketuvim, and they found passages that were drawbacks to the same message of what that Parsha would have been. Why? Because it doesn't contradict itself like the way Paul and Jesus con contradicts itself. Sorry. <laughs> but all right, my friend, I think we've covered just about everything we need to cover yeah. this week. Yes, um, and more. <laughs> oh, certainly. <laughs> but as always, uh, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notifications, uh, give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing here. Uh, I'm Steve Eisenhower. If you have any questions, rediscovering yeah, just God. Leave them down Instagram. below because I feel like. If you have questions, then I'm growing too, and I want and I want to learn more. So, like, just if you're having questions, just put them in the comments, and we'll look into them. We'll get right. Hundred percent. Even if we don't know the answers, because we don't know everything, we're not scholars. We don't. We, don't. we probably missed a whole bunch thing, of stuff we should have talked about today. Right. <laughs> one important thing about being a Noahide is, um, we pretty much like we we study. Yes. We yes. learn. Yes, we learn. And, uh, it's true, very true. I think in I think in three years of being a Noahide, I learned exponentially more than 27 years of. I agree with that. 10 million. 26 percent. years of being I, a Christian. I feel like that. I feel like that in the last year. I agree with that 10 million percent. Like, yeah, just ask questions. Uh, I, I hope that you can challenge us and make us think outside the box as well. Right. Right, because we need to be growing from each other. You know, exactly. we're all like exactly. we said before, we're all the B'nai Hashem. We're just here to help, like honestly, like right. We, I really have no ill will against Christianity whatsoever. I'm thankful yeah, like, that I like, had the yeah it I, brought me to where I am now. Exactly, and I just want to help people see what I saw too. Like right. that's really what it is. It's right. Just come to the facts. Let's talk about facts. Yep. Let's talk about what the Bible says. Learn some Hebrew. Yeah, um, that's important. Even, even, I'm nowhere near fluent in Hebrew, but I can understand patterns. I can understand what symbols mean. Once you, once you are a cut, once, once you can see the alphabet, know what sounds the letters make, you can, you're pretty much set. <laughs> even if you can, can't, yeah. even if you can't speak or write it, you know. Right. Um. Yeah, you can read it. You can. It's readable. Yeah. Once you learn the alphabet and the vowel system. <laughs> yeah. But even without that, even if you're even if you're reading like on Safaria or something like that, and you have the option to use the vowel system or without the vowel system. Oh, I find that a little hard. <laughs> for yeah, but I mean, if you know that, for example, yeah, if you, if you go if through you know it, that the, the if, word if you're Mashiach, fluent, then yeah, you don't need the vowel system at all, and you don't even need to be that fluent apparently to 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 to, to, to forget the vowel system. Right. Right. But all right. That's putting us right around an hour. That's crazy. I didn't so, think uh, we'll have enough to talk about. But. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I thank you, Jason. If you have any questions for him, reach out. Any questions for me, reach out. We're both on Facebook. We're both in a lot of Jewish, Noahide, Christian groups on Facebook, discussion groups. Um. Or yeah, drop drop some comments on this video. Yeah. However, reach just out. Ask, just ask. I'm just, I'm trying to learn too. Really, that's what it is. We're just help to helping each other grow. That's it. Yeah, most certainly. Because if you're not growing, you're dying, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs>
But all right, this was another episode of Rediscovering God, and uh, we'll see you next time, guys. Bye, everyone.